Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with a regular scrapbooking video for you. I have not done an eight and a half by 11 layout in a long time, so I thought that I would pull out some older photos and put together a layout. I am using the Hope Collection, primarily the Hope Collection from Felicity Jane. Now, that collection is sold out in its entirety, but you can order uh, elements individually still. Those are still in the shop, so everything will be linked down below for you guys. And I've done a little bit of prep work off camera ahead of time for you guys. So so I am doing eight and a half by 11. So I've cut down one of the solid cardstocks to eight and a half by 11. I have a few of the pattern papers kind of trimmed down. I'm only using papers from the Hope Collection. Uh, these pieces here, I wanna create kind of a circular element behind my photos. And so I went ahead and used a nesting die, uh, circle die to cut out a few different circles from the pattern papers. And then I don't stitch on camera. So I went ahead and just did that off camera real quick and just stitched around. Um, I wanted to show you uh, how to use Felicity Jane products with a more masculine layout. I get questions about that all the time about, you know, scrapbooking my boys because I do have boys. And so while Hope is very girly, very frilly, very pretty, um, you know, you've got that beautiful floral paper. I wanted to show you how you can take it a little bit more masculine. And so I'm going to incorporate lots of black elements to just kind of give it a little bit heavier, you know, of a feel. And then I did adjust my photos in Lightroom um, because they were wearing like orange and bright yellow and some bright greens. And so I adjusted it so the, the colors would go a little bit better uh, with the softer tones of Felicity Jane. I actually printed these photos out like months and months and months ago, and they just happened to match the colors in the Hope Collection. So uh, I have all those cut down, just a variety of papers cut down to go behind my photos. Uh, I am going to use some of the buttons from the Hope Collection and incorporate those into my layout. And then I just have some random uh, like a chipboard piece, I think from last month. Uh, these are the Brie chipboard flares. So there are some from past collections, but let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we'll throw this layout together pretty quickly. Okay, so I'm going to just start adhering things down. Uh, this was a piece of the pattern paper and then the scallops was actually one of the branding strips and I just liked that it had kind of that wave pattern that went along with the water in my photos. So the photos that I'm documenting are my boys. Last summer we've been taking an annual uh, camping trip for my birthday for the last few years and so this was on that trip last summer. As you're watching this video it's actually the day before my birthday in 2020 and we don't get to go camping. Thank you, coronavirus. <laughs> so I just thought, well, let's just document last year's photos and reminisce. So um, in my journaling, I mentioned that uh, we rented a paddle boat and I took the boys out and minutes after this photo or these photos were taken, uh, we had an argument and told the kiddos, you know, you can't be in the water without shoes on. And they argued and argued and argued that it was totally fine. And sure enough, before I'd even gotten out of the boat, Aiden had hopped out and got a giant fish hook in his foot. <laughs> so I got to lift him into the boat. At that point, he's, you know, 80 pounds, lift him into the boat, row him back. And it took about an hour for him to finally let the deck hand rip out the fish hook so we didn't we ended up wrapping up our camping trip a little bit early that way I could go and get him a tetanus shot and get all that taken care of but uh, I love just having those memories documented and that's one of the many reasons that I like to scrapbook so here you can see I'm kind of sticking things down where they're going to go on the page which is good for you because spoiler alert I lose some video footage here in a second but uh, as I kind of stage things I know that I want to stay like free stitch a circle onto my layout here um, with my sewing machine. So I just used one of those circle dies as a template and just lightly penciled that in. And then I'll take that over to my sewing machine here in a minute. But uh, I decided to go ahead and stick down these pieces while I'm at, while I'm at it. That way I don't have to just keep staging things back and forth. So I'm just using some dry adhesive. Now, when I go to take this over to my sewing machine, uh, I take some photos and then I don't turn my camera back on. So it does come on back on um, after I get some things adhered, but you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. So I am uh, trimming off anything that's hanging over the edge. Uh, here you can see I went ahead and stitched that circle 
and um, I just wanted kind of a mix of the papers and just some of the black stitching. So there you go. Magically, everything is adhered down. <laughs> so I did use the Hope uh, Alpha stickers for my title. It says Love to Fish, uh, and then uh, here I'm going to go ahead and tack down the buttons and here's where I make another mistake but we'll get there. I'm just using a pencil to mark the dots and I found it's easier to poke the holes first. I couldn't find my other pokey tool so I'm using this one here which is for punching out die cuts and I accidentally poked my finger. I looked at it and thought I was okay um, but we'll see here in a second that I was not. So for those of you who don't want to see blood on camera it's a very small amount of blood but there is a little bit of blood <laughs> in this video so just heads up but I'm just using some black embroidery thread to stick these buttons onto the layout. I'm just doing a very simple little cross shape on the buttons to hold them down. Uh, all of my eight and a half by 11 pages go into page protectors and a binder. So I don't have to worry too much about things um, falling off or getting messed with in an album because they are protected by um, those page protectors. I just have three. I tried to do groups of three. So there was like three of those chipboard flares, three of the buttons. Um, I do have three paper circles. So I like to work in groups of three. So same thing with this. And I'm just doing a simple little knot on the back to secure it. And then here's where I go to flip over and stitch this last one. And apparently I had poked my finger and I end up getting blood on my layout right there. <laughs> I'm like, dang it, at this point, you know, I realized that I lost footage and I'm at the very, very end of it. And I'm sitting here just frantically like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I tried blotting it up. I tried using a sand eraser and then ultimately just flipped things around, try to cover it up. I wouldn't typically cluster this little cluster of three down here like this. It's a little bit heavier than I wanted. I wanted a little bit of space between everything, but sometimes you just, you know, things just happen and you have to cover up blood on your scrapbooking layout. <laughs> but it's okay. So we'll go ahead and just finish off tying that knot there. And then as one final detail, I'll add the date from last year onto the layout and that is it. So if you want to see more close-up photos, definitely head on over to the Felicity Jane blog where I have some more photos over there. All the links to everything are down below. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.